Hi there, in this video we're going to be moving a step closer to proving the gauss markov theorem. But before we start doing that, I just wanted to sort of illustrate uh, how the proof is actually going to proceed, because I think it's quite useful to have at the back of your head so we don't get too sort of caught up in the details. Um, so first of all, we need to prove that our sort of least squared estimator, beta hat least squared, is unbiased. And to do this, we actually need to make, make use of one of the assumptions of the Gauss-Markov um, criteria, which is the zero conditional mean of error, which written sort of mathematically is the expectation of ui given xi is going to be equal to zero. So that's first of all proving that beta hat least squares is uh, unbiased. Secondly, we need to find the variance of least squared estimators. And to find the variance of least squared estimators, we are going to assume two things. We're going to assume that there's no serial correlation between the errors. And we're also going to assume that the errors are homoscedastic. Yeah, and so that's those are going to be the conditions under which we derive the variance for the least squared estimators. Then we are going to suppose that there is some other estimator, let's call it beta tilde, and it is a linear estimator of our um, dependent variable again, so it's going to be some sum of uh, our yi with some sort of weights attached to that. And, and we first of all need to find the conditions under which this estimator is unbiased, and then we need to find the variance of this estimate of this particular estimator. And again, we are going to use um, our assumptions of homoscedasticity and serial correlation to find the variance of this estimator. And then it turns out that our variance of our sort of other uh, estimator, our beta tilde, is always going to be greater than or equal to the variance of our beta hat these squares. And the reason for that is, is because in order for it to be unbiased, it places restrictions on this estimator, this other linear estimator, which ensure that its variance is always going to be greater than or equal to least squares. So in doing so, we would have proved that least squared is blue because there are no other linear unbiased estimators which have a variance which is less than or equal, or which is less than actually least squares. So that's what we're going to be doing. In this video, we are going to be deriving a set of conditions under which least squared estimates of the slope parameter beta are unbiased. So to do that, let's first of all write down what we had at the end of last video, which was that beta hat least squares is equal to the sum of vi yi, where I'm summing across the whole sample. Um, if I use our population process, I can expand this. That's just the sum of i equals 1 to n of vi times alpha plus beta xi plus ui. And if I expand this further, I can write this as a sort of sum of individual terms. It's the sum of i equals 1 to n of vi plus beta times the sum of i equals 1 to n of vi xi plus, finally, the sum of vi times ui. Right, and you're saying to yourself, this looks a bit of a mess, but actually we can make this a lot simpler. We already found that the sum of vi in the end of the last video was equal to zero, so that term disappears. Now if you think about this particular term here, can we simplify this? Well, it becomes a lot simpler if we actually write out what it is explicitly, uh, rather than using our definition of vi. So this term is just equal to the sum of xi minus x bar and times our xi, because I'm multiplying my vi by xi, and it's all going to be divided by SSX, um, because that's the sort of definition of vi. And again, I'm summing across the sample here. Well, it turns out that the top is just the same, exactly the same as the bottom, because if I write them both out explicitly, this is just the sum of xi minus x bar, and I can write that as being all squared, times the sum of xi minus x bar all squared, where I've sort of used a trick which I've which I sort of introduced in previous videos, which is that the sum of xi minus x bar times xi is just the sum of xi minus x bar all squared. And so notice that the top and the bottom here are exactly the same, so this term just equals 1. So we can sort of replace this term here with 1. So we're left with our beta hat 
least squares is equal to beta plus the sum of vi times ui, where I'm summing from i equals 1 to m. So what set of conditions does our least squared estimator have to fulfill in order for it to be unbiased? Well, first of all, let's remind ourselves of what being an unbiased estimator actually means. Well, it means that the expectation of beta hat least squares is actually beta, the true population parameter. So if I substitute, well, actually, if I use expectations on both sides of this relationship here, then it turns out that the expectation of beta hat least squares is just going to be equal to, well, beta is just a number, so I just get beta, plus the sum of i equals 1 to n of the expectation of vi ui. So this term on the right, I can actually write this a bit simpler. If I assume that my errors, ui, are independent of my x, which is sort of contained within vi. So I can write this much simpler, which is just going to be equal to beta plus the sum of i equals 1 to n of vi times my expectation of ui. Well, my ui are just... Um, IID means zero, so this term is going to vanish. Um, and, and notice that in, in getting from sort of this expression down to here, I've actually used the zero conditional mean of errors, which is that the expectation of ui given xi is going to be equal to zero. And notice that I've used my zero conditional mean of errors to go from this line to this line, and it ensures that beta hat least squares are in fact unbiased. So we've done the first part of our proof. The next part we're going to be deriving the variance of least squared estimators assuming that we have no serial correlation and that our errors are homoscholastic. I'll see you then.